Salut mes amis, it's Minui Ru. In this video, I'm going to be designing a character based on these earrings. For the character, I added some little heart raindrops to the earrings. And I decided to make this little bucket hat. But I didn't like how it turned out, so I tried to erase it. However, the paper had different plans and it wanted to not let me erase it. Which I think is every artist's worst nightmare. I tried covering up the bucket hat lines with this bow and this hair, but it just wasn't working out. By this point, I had nearly thrown away the piece, but decided to keep working with it. And I'm glad I did, because it turns out really nice in the end. By adding this little umbrella hat, it covers up most of the bucket hat. So I think it's kind of a win. Just goes to show that with a little bit of time, you might be able to fix a painting that otherwise would be trash. A lot of footage had to be cut out for this video because it was a very long, long bit of footage. In fact, this piece took me about an hour to finish, so you tend to forget how long it takes to paint something whenever you're in the moment because it's a lot of fun and you're just working on finishing it, you know? Especially with watercolor where you might be able to finish a painting in anywhere from a half an hour to a matter of days. Um, I don't tend to work on my pieces for more than a day. I think the most I'll spend, depending on the size of the piece, is about two hours. It's because eventually I get tired and then I need to get up and get some food. If you're interested in any of the materials that I use, uh, they'll be listed in the description box below. I'm not sponsored by anyone, so they're just going to be in the description. I just Sometimes when I'm watching people, I like to see what materials they use, so... Maybe I can get it later. Some of these brushes are from scrawler boxes and this, these are random materials I've accumulated over the years. In the future, I might draw more characters with some fun earrings and design the characters off of the earrings. So if you're excited for that, uh, leave a comment down in the comments section if you have any ideas. I also may draw some horses in the future, so let me know if you'd be interested in that too. This little pot of watercolor I have in the right hand side of the screen is a custom color that I mixed myself. Just used some brown and orange and white and I think it made a really nice skin tone. I'll also have my Redbubble link in the description, so if you'd be interested in buying any of my artworks as anything as like a pillow or stickers or sketchbooks, head on over there. Even if you're just interested in my style, just head on over. I have a lot of stuff over there. I think it's important to have a mixed skin tone, especially if you draw people a lot, because then you have a skin tone you don't have to mix every time. It just leaves the hassle out of it. You can add different colors to this base skin tone to make different skin tones. For example, if I wanted this person to be more tan, I could add some brown. Or if I wanted her to have more of a reddish tint, I could add some red. When I work with watercolor, I tend to have a wash of color, kind of just mapping out where everything's going to go. And then I go over top of that with more colors. And I like to work whenever the watercolor is dry, which... Some people do, some people don't. Uh, most people tend to work while the watercolor is wet, that way they can get more of a uh, uncontrolled sort of look, but I like to have everything in place, so I like to let it dry first. The sizes of the brushes I'm using are, uh, this brush in particular is a size one round brush, and the other brush is a size 8 round brush. I like to use two brushes because I can have one for fine details and the other one for big areas of color. Now I'm just adding in just in little bits of shading. This is just making everything pop a little more. It's hard to shade a bucket or umbrella because it's supposed to be wet. So you're trying to look at where the light's showing and it's just difficult. And I imagine this girl in the rain... Actually, later on when I make the background, there's going to be little raindrops, so I tend to just try to make it look shiny. I'm 
I'm just adding some little blue hints here and there and trying to shade the little metal on the bucket hat. Also trying to make the clothing folds, but I have trouble with that, so maybe I'll work on that in the future in a video. Now I'm just adding little lines around the spots on her jacket. Uh, as I started doing this, I was reminded of Vasily Kandinsky. He's got a artwork where it's um, circles of different colors inside of other circles. So I thought that that looked really neat on this kind of rain jacket. Because rain jackets can look pretty abstract sometimes. Just like rain can look abstract. It's really pretty. I was going to try to make these in different colors, but with the blue already on the raincoat, it was going to be hard for me to add any sort of pops of color. Now I'm just adding some metallics into the, uh, the hat and the earrings and a little bit in the eyes. I think it really makes the character pop. This is just a pearlescent set of watercolor. I believe it's koi watercolor. This is the metallic and fluorescent set. And because I had to cut out so much of the video, I won't be able to show you when I made the background, but I just did a light wash of color, added some raindrops, and uh, put some line art around them. You'll see them in a second. And here's the finished thing. God bless. Bye. Thanks for watching.